Tell us mm-hmm. what you did different. Oh my gosh, where, yeah, that's a whole, oh jeez. <laughs> How much time do we have? <laughs> I started out, um, I wanted to, uh, gosh. When I thought about the, the um, you know, the things that my mom had to do, you know, the, the migrating from another, a whole nother country. My kids obviously was first generation Americans, you know. The fact that they have an American passport, that's a blessing. (laughs) You know, they can go anywhere in the world, you know, be whatever they want to be. You know, but I remember my mom, a year before she died, she was at my house and she just, she stood in the living room and she just kind of looked around and it wasn't really about the house, but she looked around my house and she said, wow, because she remembered the house that my great grandfather had. As you know, we use this platform to share stories of resilience. And today, I have a very special guest. Hey, everybody. Welcome again to the Sally Allen Podcast. What did I say? Welcome and again. <laughs> Wait, welcome again to the Sally Allen podcast. I'm really happy today and my heart is really full. And that's why I'm in such a jolly mood because I have my sweet friend Karen Williams here today with us. And um, believe it or not, I say my, my sweet friend, I just met her a month ago. And it seems this year like God has been bringing strong women into my life and 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 we our friendship accelerates so quickly. You know when it was meant to be. Don't you agree, Karen? I do. I, I do. do. And with yeah, that, absolutely. I want to welcome. I want to welcome her properly. Karen is a um, relationship. I lost. I don't even carry my own handwriting. <laughs> you tell us who you are. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is gonna be a fun one. <laughs> So officially, like I said earlier, my my resume says that I am a relationship and conflict resolution strategist. Okay, that's why I wrote down I couldn't read. <laughs> anyway, but I'm excited to share that today we're gonna we're gonna journey through her resiliency. We're gonna journey through some relationship tips, and we're gonna journey through some conflict resolution. Absolutely. If we get there, oh, whatever, course. whatever way this goes, it's not scripted. We'll, so we'll go with the real. flow. <laughs> so with that, officially, I want to welcome you to the Sally Allen podcast. I am so excited that you're here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So when you and I met, our our journey, let, let me see how, oh, we were on a networking event. hmm Right. And we found that we really, we really enjoyed each other. Then we decided to go to coffee. Yep. Then yep. you came to the sisterhood collective at my house. Yes. And here we are. I know. We had so, the thing is what really, um, I think what really sparked for me was how many things we had in common. Yes. It was just crazy. We started our business the same. We were from the Caribbean. It was, you know, the dates were lining up. I'm like, okay, this lady's weird. <laughs> I'm like, it was sweet, but that's my, my Jamaican friend, Guyanese yes. and Jamaican here. Yes, yes. yes. And and yes. we're proud to be from South America, the, the Caribbean. We are yes. proud South yes. Americans. Yes. Brown all the way. Guys. Brown girls. Brown girls all the way, <laughs> yes. all the way. So you've had quite a journey. When you shared yeah. your story with me, you've had quite a journey that, that led you to where you are today. Mm-hmm. Do you mind sharing a little bit of that? Oh, God, where do I even start? Um... You know, of course, my uh, this one of the things that connected us originally was my my mom migrated from Jamaica. You know, in gosh, was fifty years ago, maybe. Um, yeah, I'm fifty six, so yeah, I was about six or seven years old when she came to the U.S. for the first time, and um, you know, that was a big separation for me. You know, um, I actually dealt with the you know, the feelings of abandonment, like, okay, my mom left me and, you know, all of that, what is it, all the things that go with that. And uh, it's not until I, you know, got to be an adult that I realized that, gosh, I can't even imagine what it was for, you know, what it was like for her 
to make that decision, you know, to leave your baby behind just for a better, bigger future ahead. You know, um, as a kid, all I know was my mom left. You know, that didn't make sense. That didn't register. And so it was helpful to have that conversation with her before she passed away. And, you know, her birthday is actually the 24th of this month. And it's, you know, Women's History Month and all of those things kind of get me a little emotional in the month of March. And, um, you know, it was awesome to be able to have that conversation with her before, again, before her passing that, gosh, I can't imagine had you not made that decision, mm -hmm. you know, for us to, you know, migrate and um, having the opportunities, you know, that has presented itself to me. You know, I, man, I look back at what my life would have been Mm. You know, had she not made that decision, had she not made that sacrifice. And, you know, I grew up thinking, oh, my God, I will never leave my children behind. I'll never do this. I'll never do that. And I'm thinking, <laughs> OK, girl, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, but I feel that's such a good point because I feel like you can't understand what it's like to be a parent until you've become a parent. hundred percent. Yeah, and, and we judge our parents sometimes, and there are so many people that are estranged from their parents, and, and you have no idea the sacrifice and how they felt and what they had to do to get you to where you are. 100%, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, the thing is, um, I was actually having this conversation with somebody yesterday, and, um, you know, she's about 36, so she's in the same age group as my own children. And I said, um, we do have to give, I urge you, to give your parents some grace, you know, kind of see them outside of just being parents. You know, they're human beings. They're, they have, um, you know, struggles just like you do. They have um, hard decisions to make. You know, they also, um, you know, they had dreams and visions and goals, you know, that they may have had to have sacrificed, yeah. you know, for you, you know, and no, we're not saying that, yeah, their parents are supposed to do those things. Let's look at it and, you know, just empathize with them. Step into their shoes for a second, you know. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I, I do feel like as, as parents we have certain obligations, but some parents, the things they've gone through, I know for me as a parent, and you could probably speak for you, I, I had to stop going to college. I had to stop going to school because mm -hmm. I had to take care of my son. Mm -hmm. um, I, at times I had to work two jobs yep. and leave him. He didn't understand that at the time. Yep. Uh, and th there are so many things that, that we have to sacrifice. And um, and I think that's why when, when we push our kids, we're like, we don't want you to live the life we live. Exactly. We want exactly better for you. Exactly that. Exactly that. You know, you think, um, you know, hey, we, you know, because I look back at my, because I actually know and had a relationship with my great grandfather. And when I look at his life and the sacrifices he made, then I look at my grandmother's life and I saw her sacrifices. Then I mm -hmm. saw my mom. So I can actually, I have a track record. I can track it all the way up to the sacrifices I've made, you know, for my own children. And, you know, when I have those hard conversations with my kids and I said, hey, this is, you know, we had to do this. We didn't always get it right, but always know that a healthy parent is always coming from a place of love. They're always mm -hmm. coming from a place of sacrifice and the place to make you better. You know, you know. of course, we know there are unhealthy parents out there. We, right. we get that, we and get that's that. not yes. what we're speaking to. Mm -hmm. We're speaking to the heart of those moms that their desire for their kids is always the best of themselves, the very, very best of themselves. Yeah, yeah, and it, it seems like it sounds like you you broke that cycle. Mm -hmm. Tell us, tell mm -hmm. us what you did different. Oh my gosh, where? Yeah, that's a whole. Oh jeez, <laughs> how much time do we have? <laughs> Give us two points. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, one of the main things is, um, you know, I I started out. Um, I wanted to. Um, gosh. When I thought about the the um, you know the things that my mom had to do, you know the the migrating from another a whole other country, my kids obviously was first generation Americans, you know, 
the fact that they have an American passport, that's a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. they can go anywhere in the world, you know, be whatever they want to be. Um, you know, but I remember my mom, the, a year before she died, she was at my house and she just, she stood in the living room and she just kind of looked around and it wasn't really about the house, but she looked around my house and she said, wow, because she remembered the house that my great grandfather had, that one room in the middle of the woods, mm. you know, wow. and she said, wow, we've, we've really come a long way. She said, my house can fit in your house twice. <laughs> Probably four times. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But, you know, again, it was, it, it's not about the, the physical house. It was right. the, the, the fact that she had positioned me right. to where I could make different choices. You know, I had different options. You know, um, I had the freedom to, you know, I decided to join the Air Force after high school. You know, um, because at the time, at, that's, that was such a troubling time for me because I, I really thought that my, um, I really thought that my mom didn't know anything. You know, I just thought like, lady, you know, yeah. in my own head, I, I had my own, um, my own thoughts about, okay, I looked around, okay, I was a, she was a single mom, you know, so going to college is not an option. You know, again, all this conversation in my head didn't stop to think, you know, should I talk to her about it? No, because moms don't know anything, right? Right, right. And so anyway, I um, ended up going to join in the Air Force. And, um, you know, it's like afterwards I thought, like, why didn't I go? Why didn't I go to college, mom? Why didn't you encourage me to go to college? She said, I don't, I don't know why you didn't want to. We didn't have that discussion. We didn't have that, that conversation. And, you know, the, the, it's just, you know, every time I think about that stage of my life, that's probably the one regret I did have in my life that I didn't go to college after high school, you know, joining the military instead. But I, I live by this mantra that I'm always where I'm supposed to be. That's right. You know, so that was definitely, you know, my path. And, you know, in so doing, you know, met my husband and, you know, so many life lessons there. But, um, yeah, that was uh, definitely one um, you know, one decision, you know, cause yeah, my mom didn't finish, my mom didn't even finish high school. My mom, grad, uh, she left school in the sixth grade, mm -hmm. you know, she left school in the sixth grade. So in our immediate lineage, I was the first one to graduate high school. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's a cycle breaker yeah. right there. Yeah. Yeah. That That's amazing. One. That's incredible, Karen. So one of the things you and I were talking about relationships and, and you shared you've gone through something so traumatic that it led you to do what you do today. Tell us about that. Um, first, the, I was probably about 20 when I, I got pregnant with the guy I was dating, you know, from the guy I was dating at the time. And, hey, of course you're supposed to marry the person that's the father of your children, right? That's a law, a rule, something. <laughs> Isn't it written down <laughs> that, somewhere? That's what we were talking about. <laughs> it's, it's written down somewhere. That's, that's what you're supposed to do. That's what you're supposed to do. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. <clears throat> and, you know, I remember even um, we were just going to do a little quickie thing, and my mom was like, oh, no, you know, we're doing a wedding and the whole dress and the limo and the, the whole nine yards. Anyway, um, it, it was a toxic relationship from the start, you know. Um, it was completely unhealthy. And, you know, yeah, we dated for, for three years before, you know, actually, you know, before our son came along. But um, it was about a year into the marriage. I was like, this, this, this is not working. It was unhealthy and unhealthy in the sense of, um, you know, there were physical violence in mm -hmm. the home. You know, um, the anger, we, we didn't know how to communicate. You know, after a while, you know, I allowed the relationship itself to start basically forming who I was, you know. Um, and so the anger, it was always, oh, God, it was so always just mm -hmm. anger all the time. You know, emotional outburst, all of, all of the toxic things. And I decided, okay, this is not working for me. And, you know, in a filing divorce. So here I was at 22, almost 23. Um, I filed divorce, filed bankruptcy, 
single mom, all of that, you know, all of which I wow. did without an attorney. <laughs> but but listen, a lot of a lot of women stay longer mm-hmm. than and you were so young mm-hmm. and you only stayed what one two years. It, it the time of we, our divorce got final at twenty three month point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what gave you the resiliency to leave so quickly? <laughs> Definitely my mom. Oh. My mom. <laughs> I remember her okay. saying to me, yeah. you know, and, and it's a couple of things there because for um, for starters, she said to me. Hey, we came to this country and we struggled. This is not what I envisioned for you. Mm. I remember her saying that over the phone. But let me t- tell you, I'll say this. For those of you that are listening, your friend, your daughter, your sister, they are not leaving until they are ready, ready to, to leave. leave. Amen. Yeah. Okay? And I remember thinking, at some point I have to make this decision but I wasn't ready. I didn't know how to, you know, all, all, all of that. And I remember it was Memorial Weekend in what, 1990, it might have been. Yeah, Memorial Weekend, 1990 or 91, one of them. Mm-hmm. And I, I called a moving truck. He went to work. I called a moving truck and I packed up the, all my stuff, packed up my son and I left. Karen, that's my story. I didn't wow. tell you that. <laughs> I did not know that. <laughs> this is wild. Oh, this is this is wild. That's my story. Yeah. I think it was ninety eight. Wow. It was around Mother's Day. Mm. The, the day after Mother's Day. That's still May. Yeah, it's that's May. May. I wrote a letter and I pack up I didn't have much. I pack up a yeah. laundry bag with our clothes call a cab and we left yeah i left a note a note that the house wasn't robbed i um i left i a left, note I, left. <laughs> I left did you leave your attorney's number i didn't have an attorney okay i left to my yeah I, I, I left my i, I left my that. office yeah i left my office number to arrange if you want to do you know uh, visitation or whatever yes and now nah, he's he was you know i because i didn't want him to know where i lived same yeah same thing yeah same I didn't, thing. yeah i didn't want him to know where i lived and um, left the, you know, my office number. And, um, you know, I, because at that point, I couldn't get him to even come with me to get the help that we needed. Mm-hmm. And it's not until I actually took some action steps that he was like, oh, wait a minute, I, I want this. I mean, we, this dude jumped on top of my car as I am driving out the parking lot, you know, yeah. to, oh, no, we can work this out. We can... Dude, it's done. It's done. Because one, wait, wow. listen, guys, once, and I, I, I'm sure we guys the same thing, but once you make a decision to leave That's a toxic right. thing, That's you right. are not going back. That's you right. are done. Do you are at the end of your rope. <laughs> Karen, <laughs> you know? same thing. End of the rope. Yeah. I've, we, I tried everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I made sure I tried everything. Yep. And when you said no, because now when I'm going, I'm done. Exactly. How cool is that? Our exactly. stories are the same. This, <laughs> that's <laughs> it. I, <told> you. <laughs> I was like, there's no turning back. Once yeah. we're done, we're done. You, you really don't understand. Like, yeah. don't, don't waste your time. Yeah. On and that's why when, even when other people were telling me to leave, I said, listen, I, I know I'm supposed to leave. I know this relationship is not working. I know right. it's toxic. I know it's unhealthy for my son. But when I leave, that's right. I am going to be leaving. Easy. I am gone. Exactly. I am done. There's nothing left to salvage. I can sleep at night knowing that I did everything. Everything. That is so great yeah. because I absolutely love that. And we're saying like for anybody listening to this, no judgments on if you're still in it because Mm -hmm. it's really hard anyone can sit out there and say why aren't you leaving why are you in this toxic relationship but at the end of the day you know what you know what you know the boat you're sitting you know which shoes you're walking in no one else knows that and you know the reason why you're still there exactly but what i do advise is talk to somebody about this because when we are in our heads which i was for seven years Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you don't tell you had your mom, Mm -hmm. yeah, I finally opened up after seven years to a friend, and that's when I got the courage. Yeah. 
Yeah. And and I want to also, you know, uh, follow up with that. If you are being harmed, if you're hearing this and you are being hurt, Yes. Leave, Leave. look yes. for help, find a safe, you know, a safe space, shelter your friend, your mom, your sister, your friend. Get out of there if you are being hurt, physically hurt. Right. I mean, yes. I don't know how much to stress this, but if you're being physically harmed, get the help. Call 911, call a friend, call somebody. Yeah. You know, because I found that with abuse, I found the way mine worked was it was first verbal. Then it was psychological, mm -hmm. and then it got physical, yep. and to a point where I'm on the floor being strangled. That part, I was on the bed with a with a hand around my neck. Yes, and my glasses. Uh, I, all I could feel was the whole hand over my face. Yeah, and I'm thinking I'm I'm underneath this pressure, looking up at this face of this person. Like, how did I get here? Yeah, I'm having this whole conversation like in my head. Like, what is this? What what is happening right now? Yeah. You know, how did I get to this place where this is my life? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I was like, you know, I'm this no, this nope, this is not gonna work for me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm out. That's it. I'm out of here and yeah. I'm really, really, really out. Yeah. yeah. So tell us that's great and that's a good segue into how I guess did that prompt you to start doing what you're doing, becoming this relationship and conflict resolution strategist? Listen, that that happened in my early 20s, mm. right? So, like I said, I'm 56 now. So it took me a long time to even equate my story with what I'm doing right now, right? Because I started in, um, you know, just started at church helping people with their, you know, basically helping women understand their identity in Christ. That was the main thing. Hey, girl, you are, you know, you are amazing. You're awesome. God has created you to do so many awesome things. This is who you are, right? Just helping them recognize that identity. And then I realized as, you know, the more I did it, the, the main focus of most women was their relationships. That was their pain point. That was what, um, you know, they struggled with. That was the, the you know, their whole life seemed to surround the, the relationship, right? And when um, I, re you know, I, I said, listen, I, I can probably help you with that. At the time I was married with, you know, I was married to my current husband, probably about 15, 16 years at that point. And I said, hey, I can have some, you know, I don't know everything, but I can teach you the things I do know, the things that we're doing right. You know, because after coming out of a toxic relation, trust and believe you should be able to identify a healthy one because right. you are at least know what you don't want. Right. And, you know, we just started going in that direction and, you know, just fast forward, you know, to, hey, you're married. You don't know how to get how to be married. Let me help you with that. To finding out that they didn't know why they got married in the first place. I said, OK, let me create a premarital program. <laughs> See if I can help you with that. <laughs> and, you know, and as we're going along, it just kind of morphed, you know, into you know, write in a whole workbook on how to actually do this premarital thing, how to, you know, give you the tools to actually be married and stay married, you know. And so, yes, my story did play a role into, you know, helping people with, you know, with this whole thing. And then I realized, hey, when we get together, I'm not really, I'm not counseling people. I'm not really giving you advice per se. Right. We are actually strategizing, you know, coming up with a game plan, brainstorming. So I'm like, I'm, I guess I am a strategist. Just, yeah. yeah that's, you know, so the, <laughs> like I said, that's how my resume came up with that, <laughs> with that name. I, but you and I are talking about this and, and we came to the conclusion that coaching people and being able to strategize in that way is truly a gift. Correct. And in order to do it right, um, it's a calling and a gift. In order to do it right, you have to love and care about people. Oh, gosh. Yes. hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent. Because if people are not at the heart of your vision, who is? Right. What, right. Are you, what exactly are you doing? Right. How are you serving people? You know, yeah. why would I want to sit down with you if people isn't at the heart of what you do? Right. Right. I, and I see that. Um, and, and, I, and I don't I love people. I don't grow weary. Like some people say, I'm, I'm just tired of the world. I'm tired of people. 
tired of people in. <laughs> I'm tired of people in. And I find I'm not. Yeah. I know how to remove toxic people quickly. Right, right, and right. then I know how to build those relationships. But but at the heart of, of what we do, we love people. And talking mm-hmm. about that, I found that I've been coaching like every, since I was six years old of mm-hmm. mediating. Did you find that mm-hmm. that you were doing that? Yeah. My my thing was I find that I was teaching people. Yeah. You know, teaching them how to do something. You know, when people ask me questions, I didn't just give them answers. I said, well, okay, you know, I start asking more questions, going to, you know, getting deeper, getting to the yeah. depth of why they even feel what they feel and, you know, where is it that you're trying to go? You know, right. and I was like, oh, I got is, something here. That, I, I, <laughs> that, look, I can, I can do this. Well, you, <laughs> you started know? differently. I started off with being the know-it-all. <laughs> Full transparency. I was like giving advice. And as yeah. I learned coaching, I learned active listening. And it's mm-hmm. so beautiful when yes. you've mastered active listening. 100%. 100%. Yeah, you actually hear what people are not saying. Yeah. Yes. You hear what's not being said. Yeah. You hear the emotion of yes. what's being said. Yeah. You know, you, you, um, you, you hear more of their, their soul. Yeah. Than just what's coming out of their mouth. Oh, totally. You totally. Know? Yeah. And it, it took me a, a couple of years to learn that because, yeah. oh, I have to share this story. <laughs> oh, I'm certified through International Coaching Federation. Mm-hmm. And it's I'm really proud because it's one of the most reputable coaching yes, organizations. But I failed the first time. And the reason why I failed is <laughs> I was coaching my friend and I started giving advice. Mm-hmm. And that's when I learned. Yeah, they listen to it, and they're they're like, "This is not coaching. This is giving advice. Go learn how to coach. Go learn how to coach and come back." <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's when I learned years ago. Okay, active listening, not giving advice, asking powerful questions, yes, and let people come up with the solutions because they have the answers. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, you are the expert on your relationship. Yes, I'm only the expert on my, my marriage. That's right. You know, right. I know how to navigate my marriage upside, downside, across. I know how to do that. You yeah. know, so when I, you know, I can get, you know, people say, what, so what, give me some tips on, the, on relationship. Oh, yeah, I get that all the time. Yeah, give me some tips. Uh, well, what worked for me, That's right. you know, are, and I go down the list, and I always use this example. I said, um, you know, people talk about toxic relationships. Well, what's toxic for me may not be toxic, toxic for, you, for you. Yeah. You know, yeah. I've talked to men who think toxicity is my wife is unable to cook. Well, I'm not a cook. My <laughs> husband loved me just the same with not being, not liking to cook, don't want to cook. <laughs> well, if you think that's toxicity. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. I've yeah. heard, you know, I heard him say all the time, I'm not marrying anybody that can't cook. Well, yeah. if that's important to you, don't, you know, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to minimize it. But right. what's, uh, if that's okay for you, if that's what you require, don't try to make somebody that's not a cook into one. Right. If they don't want to do it, don't try to make them into it. Right. What do you say to people though? Like I would, I have people say to me all the time, you know the answer, tell me. And I would say, I do, but you tell me first. Yeah. And then perhaps I'll add to it. Yeah. Well, how, how do you handle that when they tell you your clients? Are like, you, yeah. Because sometimes they get frustrated. Mm-hmm. Like stop asking questions. Yeah. Tell me what to do. Tell me what to do. Yeah. <laughs> like, no. I'm so, and, and the thing is, what I usually tell them is, I'm not going to tell you what to do because you're not going to do it. Right, right. You're not going to do it. I mm-hmm. guarantee it. I know you're not going to do it because here you are. Because you're trying to tell, you, you want the easy way out. Exactly. Yeah. You want the red pill. Yes. And you have friends in your life, family in your life, um, other coaches, other therapists that have told you told what you. to do, but still, here you are. I actually had Man, somebody. that right there. Yeah. So true. I actually had somebody call me, and I've tried therapy, I've tried counseling, I've tried all of these things. Right. And none of it is working. What are you going to do differently? I said, okay, um, tell me one thing, not 10 things, one thing right. that you've ever tried from your therapist, your counselor, your advisors, that you've tried and it did not work. Mm-hmm. Crickets. I'm still waiting for the answer. Because you didn't do what you were supposed to do. They've not done anything. Not done anything. Yeah. So... I, I always shy away from people that say, tell me what to do. 
Right. You know, right. a coach doesn't teach you how to play basketball. A coach That's doesn't right. tell you, doesn't teach you how to play football. Yeah. They get you to the championship. championship. Yeah. Yeah. I can get you to the championship, you yeah. know. But you got to do the work. That part. You got to run gotta the plays. You got to run the plays. You yeah. got to run the plays. Yeah. When, I, when we sit you down in our... this when no one's watching. That part. Yeah. That part. Because we don't see when basketball players are practicing. Exactly. We don't see We don't see them in the gym. We don't see them, um, you know, running and lifting the weights and doing all the hard work, the practice work. That's you right. Know? We see them on game day. That's right. And we didn't see every the sweat and the tears that goes behind it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So I would say what we're trying to say is you got to put in the work. You got to put in the you work. You got to put in the work. And every time you tell me to tell you how to do something, that's the easy way out. Mm -hmm. You're not activating your brain. Mm -hmm. You want me to, to activate mine and tell you that what part. to do. And, I, and, and like I said, I'm only the expert on my relationship. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, that's right. And I think coaching is, is like... Knowing the powerful questions to ask to get people to think. Mm -hmm. And I think they realize that even when I tell them in the beginning, yeah. this is what coaching is about. Exactly. I said, it's a partnership. Yep. I am not going to answer questions. I'm not. I will help you build framework. You got to fill in those frameworks. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And they're like, well, what does that mean? I'm like, you'll see what it means. We're going to show you in a minute. <laughs> When you're not filling in your framework, you'll figure out, oh, this is what she's talking about. Exactly. This is what she's talking exactly. about. Exactly. Yeah. Because I'm going to give you the, like you said, the framework. I'm going to give you the blueprint. I'm going to give you the plan. That's right. That's right. You know, and I'm going to see if you're going to put the roof on the floor and the floor on the, 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 ceiling. the ceiling. That's right. You know, That's right. we're going to show you. Yeah. yeah. Now, it's beautiful. I paused a client yesterday because I was getting this. Well, I don't know. I don't know. You tell me. And I said, we, we have to pause till June. Yes. Because it doesn't yeah. seem like you have anything to work on. Yeah. So I'm not going to sit here and do the work. <laughs> do the, the thing is, I cannot yeah. care about your relationship more, more than, than you, you do. do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, period. Exactly. So talking about coaching, um, tell us about the different types of coaching. I know you do relationship. You do What's the conflict resolution part of it? So um, I actually started that part when I realized that communication and conflict resolution was the main pain points for married couples, engaged couples, dating couples, you know, all relationship dynamic, really. And basically, we didn't, people don't know how to talk to each other. Mm -hmm. You know, we get defensive, we build up walls, we cut people off, and we'll, you know, we cut people at the knees really quickly with our words. Yes. And so I said, well, I, I really need to zone in on though, you know, that part of the work, that piece of it. Um, I also realized that in the workplace, you know, because the same conflict resolution strategies that I was using for couples apply to apply in the workplace, workplace yeah. as well. And so I started working with um, small businesses, you know, and I say small businesses because, you know, n normally it works best when it's like, you know, 15 or less. Right. Um, you know, staff, staff members, and just teach them how to, you know, for one, not, not, not have conflict, but how to right. benefit yeah. from it. Yes, yes. How to benefit from it. Yeah. Allowing each person to come to the table with their own perspective and draw from that. Still right. allowing each person to be heard. So at the, at the heart of that part, uh, portion is what is this one thing in this business, this company that brings you guys all together. What is the one thing that unite you all? We should hope it's the mission of vision. <laughs> I would like to think. I would like to think. The thing is, um, and this is for business owners. Right. Is your vision clear enough to everyone at the, in the business? Is your vision clear to everyone that's working for you? Right. Is it clear to your team members? Do they know what they're working for? Do they know why they're showing up every morning? Yes. Besides the paycheck. Yes. You know, what is the vision of this company? Who is at the heart of this business, of this company? You know, and they have to be able to see it beyond just, hey, we, you know, we we make this much until a better offer comes on. I'm just here to take a right, check home. Right, right. You know, and yeah. the thing is, when when that is the only focus, you have people that will check out. And you don't get the productivity that you're really looking for. I love that. That's one of the things I've been helping my clients with, especially 
people who start new jobs and they're six months into the job. Mm -hmm. And then I'm not sure if I'm going to be here. So right away, when you have that mindset, what do you do? I always exactly. put it this way. You've just straddled the fence. Mm -hmm. And when you straddle the fence, you're only giving the, the company 50%. Exactly. Exactly. So, so what I say is, why why don't you put the, your your foot across the other the you know the other part of the fence? Mm -hmm. Purpose in your heart that I'm gonna be here for a year. Yeah, and I'm gonna give it all my best. Exactly. And then if it doesn't work out, but when you give yourself permission to stay, I think that's the part people don't get. Mm -hmm. Right. I have to live yeah. in this, this space where I'm, should I stay or should I go now? Mm -hmm. Right. They live in yep. that space. I'm like, stop it. Yeah. Stop straddling the fence and, and make a decision yes. and set a goal. Yes. And a timeline. Yes step out and I, I i do like what you, what you said about the conflict resolution i think a lot of times karen what we do is is we we just we just talk we don't communicate that part yeah we that don't part. listen we, and and part of the, the communication is really we talked about this before listening to the other person and where they're coming and exactly have a win-win solution in mind exactly um as you're as you're talking I'm listening to you. I'm receiving what you're saying. I'm not listening or, or I'm not waiting for you to stop talking so I can talk. Exactly. You know, I'm hearing you so I can respond and reply <laughs> to yes, what you're saying. Absolutely. You know? um, as, cause, and then as you were talking about strag straddling the fence, we do the same thing in our marriage relationships. Oh, that right there. We do the very same right thing there. in our marriage yeah. relationship. Well, if it doesn't work out, there's always divorce. Yeah. If I put one, you know, if I just put one leg in, then I can keep myself my safe options. I keep and my keep my options, options open. open. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. do. We do that. Um, you know, and so when you say make um, create a goal, we have to do the same thing in our marriage, in our in all of our relationship, yeah. create a goal. But I like how you added the timeline to it because right. it's not a goal if it doesn't have a timeline. Uh, absolutely. You know, you're yeah. just wishing and hoping and, <laughs> you know, if it, and if living it happens, and wishing, hoping, yeah, happen. wishing and hoping and wishing, you know. But it's just so discouraging because there is no light at the end of the tunnel. Correct. Correct. Yeah. You're not working towards something. Right. You right. Know? And at that point, you question your own values. You know, what are the ideals and principles by which you are living your life? Yes. You know, what when you get up in the morning, what is it that drives you? Yeah. Because I'm telling you, if it's anything out here, you're mm -hmm. going to be tossed through and fro because out here changes. That's right. COVID should have thought, taught us that. <laughs> it's very circumstantial. <laughs> you know, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, but what you're saying is it has to start in here. It has to start in here. In the core of who you are. Live your values, the core of who you are. That's it. Yeah. What does that That's look it. like for you? All right. So core values, you know, in the definition itself is the, the basically the list, and I call it a list. It's a list of principles and ideals by which we make our decisions. I'm asking you the mm. hard question. What's your course? For mine? Oh, yeah. And I get that. I get that. Yeah. Um, starting out, you know, my number one, and it, it's changed over the years. Oh, absolutely. I'll tell you that. It changed yeah. over the years. Because at the heart of mine, it was um, my, my um, you know, my relationship with God. Because mm -hmm. that, would, that would always be at the core of it. But then I, I couldn't, I didn't know how to translate that into people that weren't believers as well, mm. you yes. know? So I said, okay, God, help me, help me talk to people that also, they're not, that it's not believers. Yeah. You know, when Jesus walked the earth, he was able to talk to anybody. So, you know, show right. me how to do that. Yeah. So yes, at the heart of me yeah. is my relationship with God. You know, I am a Christian. I am a believer. I, you know, I walk by faith and not by sight most days, you know, <laughs> and I'm not even going to lie to you. I'm not even trying to pretend, Amen to you that. know, I'm like, girl, some days I'm like, Lord, I'm going to need you to just show up because <laughs> your girl ain't got it today, <laughs> you know, but, um, you know, then, you know, you, you branch out into family, you mm. know, integrity, mm -hmm. honesty, yeah, you know, um, you know, just joy. You know, joy is um, joy is huge for me because yeah. it's not the same as happiness. That's right. That's you know, right. it's not the same as happiness. 
Um, and I had to learn that. You know, I had to learn that. I remember telling my husband, I'm like, babe, you know what? You you can't make me happy. I don't, I just learned that. It was like yeah. mind blowing. Uh, I think it was about five years into our marriage. I'm like, I think I finally got it. Yes. The pressure yeah. is off you. I yeah. got to go figure that out. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. And you become a, a better person for that person when you figure that out. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But I want to go back to what we were talking about, our missions, because I think our missions stay the same. Um, uh, but but uh, the values are, are around it change. The way we do things around it change. Yes. Because like my mission is to help people reach their full potential personally and professionally. Mm -hmm. But the way I do it changes over yes. time now i'm doing it in a coaching capacity mm -hmm. but before it was different yeah yeah because yeah. yeah. i've always desired for people to have healthy relationships yes you know exactly I that's want, your mission yes i want yes. people to have healthy relationships you know um at first you, you know the way i worded it i just want people to stop getting divorced <laughs> stop it <laughs> I need you to stop yeah. getting divorced. Stop getting divorced, yeah. You know, yeah. and in order to do that, I had to help them establish a mission for their, you know, a mission and a vision for their relationship. Yes. Right? Yeah. And then how do they go about carrying that mission out, carrying yes. that vision out? So it has to be bigger than them. The yeah. why has to be bigger. Yes. You know. Yeah. Amen to that. The why yeah, has to be has bigger to be than bigger. you and I. Yeah. 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 Well, we've been going for a while now, and it just feels like we've been talking for five minutes. Here. I know. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> but we're going to do this again. But what's the takeaway for our audience today? Oh, geez. Um, so many things. Um, stay true to yourself. Yeah. Stay true to who God has created you to be, you know. Um, and if nothing else, find out what is it that brings you joy what brings you joy? What's at the heart of you? What's at the center of who you are? You know, what are the things that surround, um, what is that thing that surrounds the way you make decisions? Mm -hmm. So I'm basically saying, figure out what your values are. Yes. I like and that. pursue that. Yeah. I like that yeah. a lot. I like that a lot. And, you know, s happiness is circumstantial. Mm -hmm. When you build your life on the foundation of joy, it means different things to different people. For me, it's Jesus, my mm -hmm. foundation. And when you build your life on, on a foundation that's strong for you, joy, yes. then nothing can stop you. 100%. Yes. Well, thank you all for listening, and God bless. <laughs>